Alright, what's up guys, it's Tuxi with a sort of a video blog, introduction video, story video, most of all, I have a little story for you guys, for uh, those of you who haven't been on this channel for, for too long, especially if you're new to this channel, I am going to tell you guys why my fucking hand looks like a flower. Now, I'm going to tell you guys how I managed to lose my hand and how... I managed to recover from it and learn video gaming. So, <clears throat> without further ado, let's get to the story. Basically, what happened was, first of all, I wasn't, I wasn't a gamer before the accident happened. But in order for me to talk about the accident, is I have to jump back into 2010 when I was still in school. So I was. 13 years old yeah 13 years old and <clears throat> I was in seventh grade was it 13 yeah probably but anyways I was uh, in seventh grade basically what happened was we were in shop class I think it's called and we were lading these metal pieces of or I, I don't remember what we were doing or what we were making from the metal but I think it was some kind of a toolboxes or something like that and we were lading there was three people or three student groups where everybody had their own sort of post where they did their jobs so we were lading there we were lading the metal so one student was lading and the other two was like standing next to the student who was actually working and we were just watching him do his job. There was two very, very big problems with the equipment in in that specific school. First of all, first of all, the machine did not have any proper safety equipment. Second of all, our jackets we used were like I was I was pretty fucking short in seventh grade, and I think the smallest jacket that the school had to offer was like i think it was medium and my my size was like extra small back then so that as you guys can like a little bit put two and two together like there is no proper safety equipment and the jackets are that big it kind of doesn't fucking mix up yeah so basically what happened was that my we were standing like next to the machine and uh, we were just watching him lay and I don't know why but the sleeve of the jacket it ripped the sleeve and it spun it around the this metal bar and the sleeve just spinned around it and then it just instantly took my whole fucking hand there it it ripped it ripped the skin off from all the way down here I think you guys can see all the way down here it ripped everything off uh, first of all my hand snapped in half from there and it just fell to the fell to the ground and it the bones were like in that long pieces all, all the way up to this point so fuck it I'm taking this this off but yeah so basically I had no skin the only muscle was this bicep that actually is left from my hand everything else is taken from all over my body so yeah it just completely ripped my fucking hand all over the place and sorry if this sounds graphic but that's that's what happened and I want to tell you guys how or what it was like you know I, I was stuck in the machine for like 45 minutes and they were just trying to cut me off from it and eventually they did and the biggest reason I'm still alive is because my friend who was actually lading he instantly he was like this real big dude he was really fucking tall and of course he has good reach so as the the second he noticed I was having an, a little bit of a shitty situation there he just turned 180 bam put on the fucking emergency switch it turns everything off uh, so basically that that just stops the machine instantly uh, because if he would have just 
pull the switch. Oh, no fucking way. I, I would be gone. Yeah, that's that's one of the main reasons that saved my life. And the other one was that after after the machine was shut down, I for some reason I was I was literally so fucking shocked that it actually kept me awake. I I did not lose consciousness at all in that whole time period from when it happened to when they actually got me free from from the machine. So that's those are the two things that my, are actually big, pretty big reasons that I'm still alive. So thank you for my friend who actually saved my life there. So after I I was cut off from the machine or they managed to managed to take me off from it, then I was rushed into the Törle Hospital. It's in Helsinki. It's it's where people with the biggest traumatic experiences go or traumatic accidents in my opinion but yeah i was taken to hospital and i was still awake so when when we arrived to the hospital uh the first thing that i actually said to the doctor was i really gotta fucking pee I just really had to fucking be so <laughs> I thought that yeah I, I didn't look at my arm I didn't know I didn't know it, it, it was cut in half so I thought that I just broke my fucking arm like I, I didn't look at it so I, of course naturally I thought it just broken so I could probably go take a piss normally but th the thing is the doctor said like I can't let you go walk and you have to be operated so he brought me this little tiny bottle he said pee away and i was uh, i was so humiliated then but fuck it I, I i did the job like i was told to so i peed in the bottle i was sedated and then i have no fucking memory from there on out so i was lights out for a pretty good amount of time uh, after the operation when i woke up First of all, they did a hell of a great job. Like, they put my fucking arm. They took, they lifted it from the floor. They took it on the ice pack or some sort of like this, and they built my hand from this big pieces of bone. And they managed to rebuild my whole fucking hand. And they actually managed to somewhat fix my nervous systems and everything that, everything like that. So. When I woke up, they were like measuring my temperature of my fingers in order to track if it's if the blood flow is working, everything like that. When you break a limb or break a bone, you know if somebody fucking touches it, it fucking hurts. Naturally, I thought I didn't, I wasn't in that much of a bad situation, but when the nurse measured it temperature of my fingers holy mother that hurt i was i would i just opened my eyes inside like ow i've been told like after i got out from the hospital that like what the doctors actually managed to pull out pull off so first of all they took veins from my right leg pretty much what they did they uh they cut my leg from or cut the skin open from right above my ankle and they did another cut pretty close to my winky they 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 put another cut on on the groin area and they snapped the vein from above my ankle and they pulled it out from next to my mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah so they built the whole vein thing shit to my arm and you kind of like it when I spin around in here but yeah so basically they built my whole fucking arm they took skin from my both of my thighs and my head and they took muscle from my left thigh which looks pretty fucking disgusting after the surgery the scar is like and 
yeah, they built my whole arm and that's pretty fucking amazing if you ask me. But unfortunately, my hand didn't work after the operations. So they measured the temperature once more and it was it was pretty much dead. So they had to amputate my arm. They just cut it clean off 32 hours. The operation was 32 hours long. So holy fuck. I was lights out really fucking long time. But yeah, so they had to amputate me. And first of all, I didn't have my... Well, when my phone was brought to me, uh, it was shut down for obvious reasons. But holy shit, when I opened the phone, there was like almost 3,000 messages and 1,200 missed calls. And I was like, dude, there was like, dude, they took off, like, you have no thumb anymore? A question mark. Like, I was like, the doctor happened to be right next to me. Like, I was like, do I have a thumb? No, you don't have an arm. What? And that's that's pretty much what happened. That's how I learned that I I only have my left hand anymore. I keep looking that way. So sorry, 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 sorry. But yeah, that's how I learned that I don't have my right arm anymore. At that point, I've I've been in the hospital for about two or three weeks, and. I got away from the hospital fairly soon, actually. I got away from the hospital in about four weeks. Yeah, a little more than four weeks. And I went to, I went through over 30 surgeries easily. So you can kind of put that in perspective, like how big of, of a deal that is to someone that young, but also it's a pretty big deal to the, those who were in the class with me. Not to mention my parents, my friends, my everyone in my family. But I managed to survive. I had to learn everything, of course. I went through a lot of depression, a lot of suicidal thoughts. A lot of relearning every single fucking thing I had to do. And which brings me to this. How did I manage to get myself into gaming? Well, first of all, I did not play video games before the accident. I, uh, not, well, I played like PS2 occasionally. I was not a gamer whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> but the reason I actually picked up a controller was my friend. He was like, Dude, dude, let's play zombies. He had a PlayStation 3. He played a lot of zombies. And he was like, dude, let's play. Basically, my reaction was like, Hello? Do you not see what's wrong with this equation? He was like, dude, try. <laughs> he made me actually try to play zombies with him. Which was horrible. At first. Hold on. Let me do that. So basically, first, I was trying to play like this, something like this, and of course, it's pretty fucking difficult. So basically, after that, uh, we do, I kind of tried different ways to actually do something. Then I started thinking like this actually might be possible for me. Mm. So we played for like two weeks straight, not like straight straight, but we played every day for the next two weeks. And after a week, I kind of decided to try this kind of grip. So basically, no, not this kind of, hold on, uh, uh, let me switch, this kind of grip, which actually I've been using for that day ever since from that day so basically how I play video games <clears throat> I use my index finger to look around I use my thumb to move around my palm to aim and my 
for or my middle finger shoot the gun and to throw the grenades and I use my pinky to actually throw tacticals so that's the, basically the way I play I have played like that ever since and it's actually a pretty good way for me and I wouldn't say that I'm good good but it gets me by I I sort of started to drift away from zombies and into the multiplayer so of course it was horrible at first I could not get a kill and I, even after like six months I was I was lucky to get a fucking care package but then came black ops 2 I was visiting my grandparents actually for some reason I took my PlayStation with me and I noticed that Black Ops 2 was on sale, so of course I fucking bought it. In Black Ops 2 I would say I was a hell of a lot better than on Black Ops 1, but some for some reason I enjoyed Black Ops 1 more. On Black Ops 2 I played a shit ton of that I have like 11 different accounts which from like 6 are Master Prestige, 2 of them were fresh started and grinded to master prestige again and the reason I had so many accounts was because I I was in a lot of team of course I started to sort of grow interest in competitive scene on black ops 2 or call of duty in general I, I still am very interested we actually are re-establishing our team for Call of Duty World War 2 which will actually include competitive team for both PlayStation and Xbox and most likely PC too but it's gonna be more in involved with content creation and montages I'm, I'm looking forward to that but anyway if you guys have any questions or if you guys want me to explain in another video or some specific topic which may have come to your mind after watching this video but so just let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to sort of give you guys and more answers or more specific answers hope you guys enjoyed the story and if you are new to this channel welcome hope you enjoy my content and I will talk to you guys later peace